Thank you, Carl, for leading us in those songs. Uh, anybody here ever seen Old Faithful? Got a few? I always wanted to see that. Uh, in my house, we had something similar. Uh, it was our version of Old Faithful. Uh, my, my mother had a cabinet in her kitchen that was hard to get things out of. It was a corner cabinet. It had a turntable in it, but the cabinet door was permanently affixed this way, and, and so it was kind of in the way for some of it. But long story short, we would be in the back room, and we would hear this noise begin, and it would be clank, 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 clank. Clank, 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 boom, and then pots and pans would go everywhere, and Old Faithful would have erupted, and we would hear things like, I am so sick and tired of this cabinet, or I'm so mad I could spit nails, something like this would, would come along every time, and so without fail, this became something that it, whenever it started, we would be in the back, and we would stop what we were doing, and we'd be going clank. Clank, 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 you know, just playing along because here it comes. And, and it was quite faithful uh, every time it, it would work out that way. Uh, I want to talk to you today about faithfulness. I want to talk about faith uh, in a more important way than, than that. Uh, because faith calls us to live uh, in a special way. It calls us to live in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our, our Savior, in a way that, that changes everything. I want to read from Matthew uh, chapter 8 this morning. This is uh, starting in verse 23. This is shortly after the Sermon on the Mount. We'll be in, in, in several different places in, in Matthew this morning. Uh, so uh, I'm going to read. I'm going to try to read quickly. I'm a slow reader. so, uh, But... We'll begin here in Matthew 8, verse 23. Then he got into the boat, and his disciples followed him. Suddenly a furious storm came up on the lake, so that the waves swept over the boat. But Jesus was sleeping. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Lord, save us, we're going to drown. He replied, You of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up, and he rebuked the winds, and the waves, and it was completely calm. The men were amazed and asked, What kind of man is this? Even the winds and the waves obey him. As, as the faithful, we're called to live by faith in Jesus. And, and that means learning to trust in this life, learning to trust that He is in control. The winds and the waves obey Him. And this means that as His followers, we must, we must receive these words. We must let them shape our outlook. You know, in every situation, no matter what's going on, this must be rooted in us. We, we can't be people that let fear control our faith. Or, to put it another way, to keep our faith too small. Are you following me? We can't let fear keep our faith too small. We're, we're called to, to trust, to act, to, to ask in faith. Let's look at another lesson here. This is in Matthew 16. 16.5, right after the feeding of the 4,000. In this verse, verse it says, When they went across the lake, the disciples had forgot to take bread. Be careful, Jesus said to them. Be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They discussed this among themselves and said, It's because we didn't bring any bread. And aware of their discussion, Jesus asked, you of little faith, why are you talking among yourselves about having no bread? Do you still not understand? Don't you remember the five loaves for the 5,000 and how many baskets you gathered? Or the seven loaves for the 4,000 and how many basketfuls you gathered? How is it you don't understand that I was not talking to you about bread? But be on your guard against the yeast of the Pharisees 
and Sadducees. Then they understood that he was not telling them to guard against the yeast used in bread, but against the teaching, against the teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. Faith comes by hearing, doesn't it? Hearing the Word of God. Paul tells us that in Romans 10, 17. And as faithful followers of Christ, the things we hear, the things we listen to, shape. They, they direct our thoughts and our actions every day. There's, there's no getting out of this. This is the way we're made. Words, thoughts, they, they shape us and direct us. And so as faithful followers of Christ, the things we hear, the things we listen to shape and direct our thoughts and our actions. So that, that tells us something, doesn't it? That we must not let the teaching of the world direct our thoughts. We must not let the lies and, and the ways of everyone else keep our faith too small. In all that we do, what do we need? We need the Word of God. Without fail, every day we need the Word of God to, to expose the lies of the world and, and to illuminate a path before us, to direct us, to remind us of who we are and how we're to live and what truth we hold fast to. We need to trust fully in God. Trust in, in His way and His power and authority in this world. His authority that we find in His Word that shapes us, that directs us, and we walk by it so that we're not living with too small a faith. Let's turn over to Matthew 17, verse 14. Here it says, When they came to the crowd, a man approached Jesus and knelt before him. Lord, have mercy on my son, he said. He has seizures and is suffering greatly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. I, I brought him to your disciples, but they could not heal him. You unbelieving and perverse generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of the boy, and he was healed at that moment. Then the disciples came to Jesus in private and, and asked, Why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, Because you have so little faith. Truly I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed... You could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. I titled this lesson today, A Great Little Faith. A Great Little Faith. Do you know what I mean when I say a great little faith? We serve a God who's great. We serve a God who, who can and will do what He says He will do. There's nothing beyond His control. And, and he, he wants to do through little old you and me. For some reason, He, he wants to operate in that way. If we'll join in what he wants to do. If we'll act and live in faith. But it is possible for us to have so little faith that our actions and our attempts are ineffective when it comes to doing the will of God. And this is because there's a difference between doing out of selfish wants, 
selfish desires, selfish ideas, you know, being self-centered, only being able to view life and the world from, you know, what I want out of it. There's a difference in living that away, ye of little faith, and doing things out of faith in Jesus, having the faith of a mustard seed, that this is just the beginning. And the first, you're worried about the outcome. Because I want what I want. I want this to work out the way I want it to. And so we're concerned about the outcome because if it doesn't work out my way, I'm not happy. I'm not pleased. It's not good. But in the second, with the faith of the mustard seed, we're trusting in what God... Do you know how to make a mustard seed? I don't either. God does. And when we trust in God, when we know that things are in His control, everything's okay. Everything is going to work out. I can have faith that God is faithful. He is trustworthy. He's at work. And that's the great little faith we need. To trust in God fully in every way. Now in Scripture we find two instances where Jesus speaks of great faith. Matthew 8 and 5, this is just before the, the calming of the storm that we read earlier. Here Jesus had entered Capernaum and a centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. And Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? And the centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority with, with soldiers under me and I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. I say to my servant, do this and, and he does it. And when Jesus heard this, he was amazed. And he said to those following him, truly I, I tell you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the subjects of the kingdom will be thrown outside into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go, let it be done just as you believed it would. And his servant was healed at that moment. Here the centurion, he believed in the authority of Jesus, didn't he? He trusted fully that, that Jesus was the one in control. And, and he knew that his place in the whole deal was to trust in the power and the authority of Christ. To, to get what he wanted. Now, he hoped that what he wanted was in line with God's will. And he asked this, this great thing of Jesus. And in this, he achieved greatness from, from the mouth of Jesus Christ. What great faith to trust in me, to trust in my authority over all of this. What a lesson for us. To trust that Jesus is in control. Jesus has all authority. God has given it to him. The second incident we find is in Matthew 15, 21. Leaving that place, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And a Canaanite woman from that vicinity came to him crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is demon-possessed and suffering terribly. 
Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. And he answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And the woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. And he replied, It's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to the dogs. Yes, Lord, she said. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And then Jesus said to her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. And her daughter was healed at that moment. Good news, isn't it? Good news for her. She put her faith in the right one. She called on Jesus. Anyone could put their faith in Jesus if they choose. The gospel message is, is for everyone who will hear it. Everyone who's, who's listening and, and wanting to accept the authority, the power of Jesus in their lives. To think how, how this woman, her life was changed because she knew that what she really wanted in life could only be found in Jesus. The Son of God, the, the one He sent to be the Savior of the world. The man who came and lived and died, he, he allowed Himself to be hung on a cross to redeem us, to set us free from the bondage of sin so we could be this great little family that gathers together, this, this family of faith family of little babies that, you know, I can't help but think about how, how awesome it is that our little ones are listening to the Word of God. You know, they're just soaking things up all the time. If you ever think, I don't want to take my little one to church, don't ever think that. Because they're, they're listening they need the Word of God shaping their minds and their hearts from the very beginning. I would encourage all of our, our young parents to you know, speak the words of God to your children. It doesn't matter if you think this is too much for them to understand. You just trust in the power of the Word of God. This woman trusted in Jesus. And she knew she wasn't even included in, in, in what was going on, but she thought, where else am I going to go? I have nowhere to turn but to this man. Only he can do what I want. And God made what, what we all want, what we all need possible through Jesus. He gave His Son so that that could be so. He redeemed us from sin through Jesus. So we could live free of fear. That we could have a faith that's real. A faith that's courageous. That, that doesn't allow fear to dictate how we live in this world. So we can know how it is that God wants us to be. And we can live faithfully by His Word. And we don't have to be confused. We don't have to be misled. We can know we are followers of Christ. And I can follow His Word. And I don't have to doubt. And in all of this, in everything in life, no matter how strong the wind is blowing, no matter whether the fires are raging out there, the sun is beating down and the temperatures are sky high, 
when the lightning strikes and the thunder is so loud that we're not sure if the windows are going to survive. Lord, send us some thunder. We're ready. We need some rain. We are people who trust fully in the power of God. In the authority of Jesus Christ in our lives. And we submit. We trust. We yield completely to His supremacy. To His leadership. In all that we do. In all that we are. And I'm so... So truly grateful for each and every one of you. And when I say this, don't think of it as, as trivial, but I'm grateful for, for your little faith. Your great little faith that brought you here today. To, to reunite. To, to be bound together in the purpose that we found in Christ. To live in His name, by the authority of Jesus. And I want to leave you with two exhortations today. Take these with you. Each, each great little day that we're given, be faithful. Don't let fear dissuade you. Trust in the promises of God. Be faithful in asking God to do great things. Ask God to do great things. And in each great little day that, that God gives us, I want you to ask God to do these great things through us, through you. And trust that He will. Can we encourage you in this today? Do you need some building up in some way that we could move that little faith to a great little faith? To a faith that makes all the difference in the world. One of our elders would love to, to pray with you, to encourage you in any way that we can. If today's the day that you've made the decision that you're going to give your life to Christ. From this day forward, your faith is going to see you through. Christ is going to be with you. The water's ready. I can baptize you today and you can enter into the family, be forgiven of your sins, receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and live confidently in the blood of Christ. That you are reconciled to God and are purposed and empowered by Him to live each and every day with a great little faith that will see you all the way to eternity. If you hear Jesus calling you, we offer the invitation now. Why don't you come to Him as we stand and sing.